Zach Eady is the most dominant player in college basketball. So how will this translate to the NBA? This is Florence Sealing. let's break it down. Zach Eady is virtually unstoppable near the basket in the college game. The Canadian center is averaging 23 points and nearly 12 rebounds per game in just 30 minutes. In his senior year for Purdue, Edi has converted on about 84% of his close twos. And that's on really high volume since he's already taken 170 of those shots this season. Defenses cannot guard him, but it's not just because Edi is 7 foot 4, 300 pounds. Obviously, it helps to be as huge and as strong as he is. The Purdue big can pretty much gain inside position against any defender in college basketball and move them around with relative ease. However, I would not say that Edie is only a brute. He has refined technique and footwork and he pays attention to the small details. For example, he's really good at using the side of his body to nudge defenders out of the way without fouling in order to create plenty of space for himself. Edie can line up out of the right and the left block, and even though I think he's slightly more comfortable dropping his shoulder to finish with the right hand, he is good with his left as well. Obviously, the Purdue big man can just finish over the top of defenders most of the time, but he's also really smart at recognizing how to take advantage of his man's position. Edie is not stiff, he has soft touch, and he moves well within a few steps to swallow up space. In the NBA, he will not play with his back to the basket nearly as much as in college. Purdue plays almost strictly through Edie, who has a gigantic 32% usage rate. But given his complete dominance, I don't think Edie's future NBA team should shy away from trying to fit his post-ups into their offense, at least to some extent. Once Edi is in the league, I expect him to be used way more as a play finisher in the pick and roll. He's obviously a very large human being, so there are just some intrinsic advantages built in there, but I very much like how he makes real contact on his screens, clears out his man, and gives himself a path to the basket. Edi is 7 foot 4 with a near 9 foot 8 standing reach. That would be more than Rudy Gobert, so once he has space, finishing above the rim is simple for him with his massive catch radius. The Canadian center is tough to stop once he gets rolling downhill because he's coordinated and fluid for his strength and size, so teams often have no choice but to foul him. It makes more sense at Purdue to have Edie with his back to the basket, but I'm eager to see more of him as a roller in the NBA, since I think it can produce great results. Given Edie's current usage, there should be an initial adjustment to a more pared down role. Also, there will be a learning curve regarding the NBA space. Purdue plays pretty slow, which is geared towards getting the ball to Edie in the post and letting him make decisions from there. As we've been seeing, he is not a rim runner. NBA teams, on the other hand, play much faster up and down basketball, and they won't dedicate entire possessions to giving Edie the rock down low. His 32% usage, which is what we're seeing this season, but also his college career average, will dwindle in the league, and Edie will have to accept that. Overall, it will be very important for the Purdue franchise player to prove that he can be as productive with fewer touches at a higher speed. Another way that Edie is impactful both now and looking ahead to his NBA future is his rebounding. I'll be focusing on his offensive boards here, but of course it's worth noting that Edie is also really good on the defensive end. As a senior, he's posting nearly 12 rebounds per game, with 4.5 coming on the offensive glass. Like with his post-ups, I find Edie to be very smart and aware about his positioning here. 
Evidently, his size helps. If a Canadian prospect bullies defenders out of the way, it's really tough to box him out when he's making an effort. But there's more technique to it than simply being a huge body in the middle of the floor. Edie gets how to swim over defenders and establish deep position in the paint, and his reaction timing is excellent. From there, Edie also has huge, safe hands to corral the ball and score himself or create extra possessions for his team. A number of teams in the NBA are really starting to prioritize offensive rebounding again. Namely, because a game has so many possessions now that any extra ones are really valuable. So, it's easy to see how Edie's skill set on the glass can be appealing, especially when you combine it with his touch around the basket, his projectability as a play finisher above the rim, and also his understanding to kick it out to the perimeter and create another good look for his team. Diving into the Purdue man's playmaking, the one thing that's obvious is how Edie can use the attention he generates with his back to the basket to in turn create for others. Usually, this has meant generating threes. Edie is going to get double teamed, if not more, pretty much every single time he receives the ball at the college level. Single coverage is useless against the Canadian center, so teams send a lot of help against him. This means that at least one of Edie's teammates will be open, largely from three since Purdue wants to give Edie plenty of room to operate in the paint. In some ways, I guess Edie should be making these reads. He's in his fourth college season and he's accustomed to receiving so much attention. But in practice rather than theory, few 7-footers can genuinely use the attention they generate on the inside to make life easier for others. Edie's main responsibility at Purdue, and I expect going forward as well, is to score but he can facilitate a little bit too with his nearly two assists per game. Still though, since Edie will be posting up less in the NBA, it is fair to wonder how functional his passing truly is at the next level. Another way for Edie to facilitate is through his screens. Typically, one might think this relates to passing out of the short roll, but this is not something that Purdue taps into with Edie, so it remains to be seen whether this is in his arsenal. However, the Canadian big man, as I touched on earlier, sets some great, bruising screens. He makes a ton of contact with the defender, which gives Purdue's ball handler a lot more space to shoot or drive. The screen assists are valuable, and we've already been seeing more focus on them in the NBA. Edie can also take defenders away when he rolls to the basket or seals hard in the paint. Since there's so much attention on him, this also creates advantages for his teammates. However, there are actual questions about Edie's passing, particularly as it pertains to the projection at the next level. Like I mentioned, he won't have the ball in the post, or in general, as much, so what we've seen so far might not truly translate. His reads are solid, but ultimately simple and within a certain context. They don't have the complexity that probably comes with the geometry of the floor changing from college to the NBA. Even now, with his back to the basket, Edie can still be an inconsistent decision maker. In all fairness, his function on the floor is to score, and he does this extremely well for Purdue, it's their most efficient offense. He's also not turning the ball over relative to his usage, but I think there are times when Edie can miss the open man, or his processing of the floor is still laggy. The good news is that Edie only likely has to focus on scoring in the NBA, but it would be nice to know if he can actually make those reads from the middle of the floor rather than from the blocks, which are more common in today's league. The Canadian center is not a shooter, but it's worth discussing his outlook here. The most important thing is that he's reliable from the free throw line for a 7'4 big man. Edie is averaging about 11 free throw attempts per game, 
and he's making them at a 72% clip. For his entire college career, he's at a very solid 71%, keeping in mind that this is always on really high volume since he gets fouled so much. As for any possible signs of stretching the floor, well, his touch is pretty good, relatively speaking, and this season he's even made a three-pointer. But this is not Edie's game at all. In fact, he never shot a three until this season, and I'm not sure that this would ever be his forte. So I think his shooting is much more about his free throws than really about any other type of jumper. Edie's dominance at the college level naturally extends to the defensive end. The Purdue center is a force on this side of the floor, averaging more than two blocks per game, and generally just putting a lid on the basket. Opposing teams are afraid to attack Edie, and his mere presence dissuades them from venturing into the paint a lot of the time. Like on offense, he is huge and covers up a ton of space, but also, he has great positioning and timing to reject or discourage drives. Bigs also do not want to post him up or go against him since they cannot move ED or finish around his body. Now, as you might expect, the Canadian Big is not a switchy defender at all, but he's impactful in drop coverage. ED positions himself well so that guards do not have easy shots over him, and generally, he buys the defender guarding the ball handler enough time to recover, get back in front, and contest. Naturally, a 7'4", 300-pound body takes more time to move around. But I would be very hesitant to call ED stiff, he can move okay in small spurts sideways, and he takes up a lot of space with just one or two well-placed steps. Despite all of this, again, there are obvious questions about his NBA role and adjustment. Usually, he can offset this with his size and reach in college, but it's true, Edie is not at all twitchy and he's lacking a quick first and second jump. Even though he's moved well this season, the reality is, in the NBA, the floor becomes a lot more spaced out, with more shooting, ball handling, and ISO skills. Teams are going to be extremely eager to test out Edie when he's on the floor, and I think we saw that this past summer in the FIBA World Cup when he played for Canada. In the NBA, teams are also going to deploy bigs who can stretch the floor, and they'll dare Edie to make longer closeouts which he struggles to execute. From there, it's also much tougher for him to backpedal in space. This is going to be an issue not only against stretch bigs, but really in any situation that forces ED to leave the paint, which is his safe space. In my eyes, I think a center like Ivica Zubats is comparable to what ED's problems, limitations, and improvement points will be defensively once he gets drafted. Zach ED is not going to be as dominant in the NBA, but I don't think it's wise to write him off either. There will be adjustments to make, he won't post up or have the ball in his hands as much, but he is also 7'4", he moves relatively well, he reads the game at a solid level, and he has a projectable role as more of a pick and roll big and offensive rebounder in the league. Defensively, Edie will have to defend in space a lot more, and probably he's only a deep drop big. Of course, this has limitations, and Edie can be played off the floor, but I think it's definitely worth finding out how he does in more of a backup role by drafting him from the late first to the mid second round. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think, and if you enjoy the channel, if you wanna watch more content like this, make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll catch you guys next time.